The reason that I'm here today and I've been here for the past couple of days is I'm setting up a 500 foot walk over the principal basin in Boulogne sur Mer Port. I've been brought in to be the finale for the Festival de Côte d'Opale. Once you get the wire up here, then call me. Uh -huh. I'll be at the hotel waiting. Next year. Next year. Oh I promise, oh. that's my one bit of sarcasm. I have this fucking morbid yeah. fascination with the edge. Why is it just last one? I'm glad I'm not doing this. <laughs> In this walk, it's a bit more complicated because we have to uh, go over uh, a key, basically, uh, where the where the tide keeps going up and down, which we have a timetable for, and we have to go in to the the, the, the key when the tide goes down, so we can walk across. The, the two complicated things are getting the actual wire from A to B, and the cavalettis, which are the ropes that go along the main cable to give it stability. And what Jade is doing now is uh, it's pretty much a method that he's, he's devised because of the traffic in the quay with all the boats going backwards and forwards. We couldn't just simply have an, an auxiliary cable going along it on which to attach the cavaletti. So we have to put the cable underneath when the tide is low and then attach uh, Cavalettis and boys to that to that cable with a spring system. It is a, a bit of a trial this one because it hasn't been tried before. Well, not on a, on a particular walk. He has tried it in his cable at home, but we'll see. Okay, uh, let's try pu pulling pulling so it goes faster. Shaft. Never happened to my girl, but yeah, right. For the for the end, like the second time. Wait, so I'll see you. Uh, I broke my Leatherman. Again, this Leatherman is, is definitely my multi-tool. I broke my multi-tool. This multi-tool is definitely uh, getting abused. But that's work, I guess, you know. Hey, let's go. Come on. <laughs> Come on, tell, tell it how it is, brother. The Gerber. The Gerber sucks. It, it would the Gerber happened. sucks. It would not have Your happened. Gerber sucks. I'm sorry. It, Your it, Gerber it, it's sucks. got more functioning parts than yours does right now. Uh, yeah, you could. Wait, wait, no, you no, could no, no. Castrate no. a cricket. Yeah, and you could castrate what? An earthworm? <laughs> Your Gerbers are about this. It is yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> your, the blade on your Gerber is like half the size of it. It's not the size that matters. <laughs> Anyone will tell you. Mark, tell him. It's not size. <laughs> I've been walking on the wire since I was about 14. I started about three feet off the ground, and I was in a show pretty much right from the beginning. I started with a small circus camp called Circus Smirkus in Vermont in the United States. About three days before the, the first performance, the wire walker teacher showed up and um, I immediately thought, well, maybe I'll try this. Maybe it'll, it'll work. And uh, I s stepped up on the wire and I walked right across it. And the teacher did like a double take and said, wait a second, go back and do that again. I remember I was doing an interview right after the season ended. And I remember my teacher saying to me, if you don't have a fear of heights, Jade's gonna have a really good career ahead of him. So I almost took it as, as a challenge to, to do it, to, to be a high wire walker, because I was saying to myself, well, I don't have a fear of heights. I can do this. And I guess I just kept going with it. Every year I came back to Circus Smirkus, uh, I, I perfected a little bit more of my skills, a little bit more of what I wanted to do. And when I graduated from high school, I had two choices. I could go to New York University, or I could go to this small circus school in Montreal. I was 18 years old and I thought, well, I can be an actor or a writer or a, whatever I want to be at any point in my life, but to be a high wire walker, it's, it's right now or it's never. And so I, I, took, the, I took the leap, I guess, and, uh, and here I am. Or not. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> 
Je sais pas s'il il a connu les chiens d'or pour entrer. J'y vais Fucking shit pisses me off right there. You see that five fucking meters? That pisses me off. I'm... This is 200 meters. Isn't it? Tonight we finally got the cable up through the basin. And uh, so now we basically, uh, the rope, the wire's tight. Everything is, is, is right on. My only problem with the setup right now is that there's about five meters less cable than there is walk. So at some point or another, either in the beginning or at the end of the walk, I'm gonna have to pass over a join, uh, meaning two shackles together. Um, which uh, has a tendency to twist if you step too close to them. So uh, that's my basic uh, thing that I'm going to be thinking about is uh, where I'm going to want to put this, this join and how I'm going to want to deal with it the night of the walk. These boat people are so nice. They they're like helping us out. He's even touching a, a rope, which he doesn't need to be doing. Little by little, Cavalettis are coming into place, and uh, now we're just going to do some fine tuning. I always have a habit of just adding an extra day onto a onto a setup just so that I have this extra day so I'm not so stressed out. And it serves me well. Traveling is a, a big part of my job. I work pretty much never in my hometown. And before, when I was single, it, it didn't really matter. I had a great time traveling. And now I guess uh, I have two sons and a wife, and it, it seems that I travel a lot less now, I guess. I think maybe I'm a little bit more uh, choosy about what kind of jobs I'm taking, but I really like being home. And I think anybody with a family can really, really relate to that. It, it changes something, you, becoming a father, and, and uh, I really like being home now. I really enjoy family. Um, you know, my wife comes from a very large family, and it takes a lot of getting used to, but it's, it's amazing. It's amazing what family brings you that you can't find anywhere else in the world. You know, and uh, it's, it's special. Jade is, is, a, is a, I think, <laughs> as far as I can see, he's a, a bit of a, a reluctant jet setter. <laughs> he does get to travel a lot, but there's no place like home. Uh, everything about home has, uh, is something that he really finds hard to live without. He, he's now got a new baby, his wife, his other son, Raphael, he he's definitely definitely loves his how his home very much. He's got a wire at home, everything he needs there, and it's a very very easy place to love. It's actually becoming a little bit of a big mess. These two boats over here haven't weren't able to move. We can't get in touch with the owners, and we still have to set up this thing before the before the tide comes in. I get the short straw. <laughs> you know what? I, what do we say? You arrive at late, so you go in the water with the crabs. With all, oh, with all crabs. <laughs> uh, Jade is uh, is my my half brother. He from my from my father. Um, he's my brother from another mother. <laughs> I've always been the older brother, and uh, and uh, our dynamic with, between Jade and I. Is, is completely different. I, I, I change completely. I am the pestering little brother, even though at this point I'm, I'm 28 years old. I, I guess I, I, guess I, I, I lay back a bit more uh, with Jade, and, and, and he, he, he loves playing the big brother with me. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap plastic bags around my shoes. You want my shoes instead? Those? Yeah. What are you gonna wear? Uh, You're not going in? No. Okay, give me your shoes. 
messy. Jet. It's gonna be fun. My poor shoes. <laughs> they're already suffering and they ain't in there yet. Yeah. Yeah, no, they're they're old shoes anyway, but uh, I've got other pairs of shoes. This Sati is gonna go down into probably ankle, shin deep crap of every kind of crap you can imagine. That's why I bring him along. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Satya. You're my favorite brother. You don't need to it? I'm going to Definitely without my family around me, I feel alone, you know, and I don't have that, I don't have that support with me, and that's kind of why I bring Satya along, too, is he's my brother. You know, we have the same kind of humors, and we, have, we, uh, we take care of each other, and, and he picks me up when I'm feeling a little bit lost and down, and, and I do the same for him, and I think it's a really nice thing that, that we have and, and that's why I keep bringing him around and, 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 and having him uh, assist me on my walk. The consistency is like my lunch, the hollandaise sauce, and the smell isn't that far away from it either. I need at least a little bit of family in my life, and I know my wife can't be there with me all the time, and obviously my kids are not going to be able to be with me there, but at least I'm going to have some kind of piece of my family with me so that I can kind of feel a little bit more grounded, and he definitely makes me grounded. Somehow I feel there's a bit of me down there too. Bit of all of us. Cavalettis, uh, some of them were shorter than others when we put them in the truck, and so we're gonna have to, we're having to double up some of them because some of them are not long enough to go from one side to the other. Uh, so it's all just it's just what happens in a you know in a in a setup. There's things that are always gonna go wrong, and it's always just finding solutions, and that's kind of it's what I do half the time is just try to find a solution to every problem. Every high wire walker has a different idea of what it means to be a high wire walker. And I think um, it can and sometimes does clash. Uh, and the reasons why we do what we do also can come into, uh, can come into play when there are two, two high wire walkers working together. Um, but in terms of Didi and I, we've worked together for almost 20 years, and uh, it's really interesting how we've been able to, over the years, uh, separate it out. We have a personal life, and we have a professional life on the wire, um, and it's very different. You know, sometimes we don't speak for six months. Um, sometimes we don't speak because we don't want to for six months. Uh, but we're always connected. Um, because we've shared a, a similar kind of experience that only, only we and other high wire walkers can really appreciate. And um, we definitely we have a bond that, that uh, is, is, uh, is as strong as anything else, you know. Whether or not D-Day and I ever work together again, uh, whether or not we even ever speak to each other again, we were brothers in a, in a very small family. This, this one of these boats that is hindering a, the setup kind of sneaked in when we weren't looking and now we're going to have to try to negotiate so that he's going to get out of the way because what's happening is if he's going to be underneath and we, we tighten up all the cavalettis, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to start hitting the boat because the wire is going to come up a little bit and so we talked to the people that were in front and behind of him and they said, yeah, yeah, we'll tell him, we'll tell him, but apparently he, they didn't and he sneaked in, so. In a lot of points it's stressful, but I, you know, it's always stressful. Every job's stressful and every life is stressful. When people say to me, wow, high wire walking, that's really dangerous. You know, it's as dangerous as walking across the road during rush hour traffic or getting into an airplane where you have no control over what the outcome is. You know how I'm, uh, you know, at least you consider me a bit of a, a bad driver. Well, let's just uh, put it this way, um, it might run in the family and 
Yeah. This, this I haven't done. And in my car, this wouldn't happen. This, this is why having a Defender is much better than having a Beaver. I thought it was the last one, and I went to turn, and I don't even know how I got up on <laughs> I mean, how the fuck did you go over it? I don't know. Hold on, pulling on this, and it went smack in my face. How do you like this? Should have waited. Smack. You're, again, lucky. Fuck, so why? Why? The success of a high wire walker is really a, uh, a, a work of balancing, um, <laughs> to use the term. Uh, it's about, you know, it's about uh, having a, a, a job where, okay, yes, honestly, we may not come home. But how many jobs in the world are like that? One, two, three. No, on three, you fucking idiot. Come on. One, two, three, go. At least here with me, when I'm doing a high wire walk, I've set up the high wire. I'm confident that I'm going to get to the other side. And it's not even being confident. There's no doubt. There's nothing in my head that's going to be, what if it happens or what if... There's no room for that. It's point A to point B. Why he doesn't wear gloves is beyond me. I'm not doing anything with you unless you have gloves. I'm gonna be like your mother. Put your gloves on, James. Sorry. No, it's okay, it's okay. You have to... Let me see your hands. Not so bad. No, but not blistered since 16. <laughs> it's not as bad as my eye. <laughs> I won that fight. <laughs> One, two, yeah! One, two, ah! One, two, ah! Two. Oi. Oi. Hey! This is what I live for. This is what I do. This is my life, my job, high wire. Feel good. Everything is ready. Everything is set. The carburetors are good. We just had a big meal. Might have to go to the toilet. <laughs> um, let's just do it. Let's do it. Well, I'm never afraid for him about heights necessarily. I do get very anxious. Uh, for, but it's, it's the whole thing, it's the whole show that it all goes well. Uh, I, think, I think the whole danger f aspect, uh, I, I don't, we don't dwell on that, there's no point in dwelling on that. In many ways the actual setup is more dangerous than the walk. Uh, it's like he says, it's a, it's a controlled risk. So it, he knows what he's doing, that, we don't worry about that.
a solitary kind of job. When we're up on the high wire and we've got a balance pole in our hands, that's it. That's where we are. We're at that moment right there. And it's only us. We have our life in our hands and, and it's a liberating feeling. It's an empowering feeling. High wire is just a, a way that I can express myself through the best means that I know possible. When somebody looks at a high wire walker, they see this impossible event going on. They see something that could never imagine doing. But yet, I go from one side to the other and I get off the wire at the other end. And I'm hoping at some point down the road that they can take that and, and use that as an inspiration for themselves. And maybe uh, when they have a, uh, a job or when they have a, a report to do or when uh, they're feeling in their lives that they, it's impossible for them to go through with it, maybe they can think back to the the high wire walker that they imagined it was impossible for him and say, wait a second, impossible is possible. And I mean, it, you know, it's a huge idea that I have that I'm inspiring people. And I, and I hope if I can inspire a couple of people just to think, you know, yeah, wow, I can keep going. I can do this report. I can, you know, continue my job because it, anything's possible. <laughs>